Hello slot racers. So today we're going to look at improving the performance of this JK Hawk 7. So I've got one here that I've just opened up uh, straight out of the packet. So I'm going to run it up, see what its performance is like. Then I'm going to run it in and then see if I've improved its performance. So I've mounted my motor into my motor analyzer and I'm going to run the warm up just to get a bit of heat into the motor and see how good the RPM is. So I've set my voltage to 5 volts on my power supply. So let's run the warm up. You can see there's a bit of vibration here, vibrating around. So I'll hold that in place. You can see that the RPM is reasonably stable, somewhere around the 20,000 RPM, just a bit below. And you can see it's got a bit of a wobble on. So that's my base point. Hopefully we can improve it from there. Next up, I'll run my acceleration test. Now my acceleration test, I'm gonna run at 12 volts because that's what the track's running at. So I'm going to run it at 12 volts and this tells me how quickly it accelerates through the RPM range. Okay, so these numbers on the screen here tell me in microseconds how fast it accelerated to 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 RPM. Okay, they're actually the gaps in between. So 1664 microseconds to 10,000, then a further 972 to the 20,000, etc. And then we'll run it through the braking test. Again, the braking test, I'm going to run at 12 volts to match the track. And this accelerates the motor, then it brakes it, and it measures the time taken to brake per 10,000 RPM. And it also gives you a power brake power figure which is your e-brake so again the higher the number the more brakey the motor is There we go. So 4,803 microseconds per 10,000 RPM with an e-brake figure of 34.9. So before I start taking a look at the brushes in the motor, we're gonna see how they run. You can see just about in this image here that the COM is still quite a shiny copper color with two black tracks on it. You might have seen my previous video where I looked into more detail about running the brushes in, etc. Uh, turn it over, that brush is similar. I'll put a really close up shot of what these brushes look like on the screen in a moment. Now my idea is to try and get these brushes bedded in and seated nicely on the comm without damaging the comm too much. So again, if you've seen my previous video, you're gonna see I'm gonna run it in some water, but this time I'm gonna do it slightly differently. Last time I ran it in the water in the forward direction, this time I'm gonna try and run it in backwards and see if it makes any difference to the way the brushes seat in and whether I've improved the performance of the motor any more than I did last time. My motor's now connected up. I've connected it up backwards. I'm gonna put it in the water. Remember, don't start your motor before you put it in the water because it would spray water everywhere. So I'm gonna drop it in the water to start with. And then I'm gonna turn my power supply on and run it for about 20 seconds. Um, you need to start slowly because sometimes the brushes wear out incredibly quickly because the idea of the water is it cools the motor, it lubricates, it stops arcing of the comm uh, and it increases the current flow. So that wears the brushes much more quickly. So again, don't start too long because you could end up with no brushes left on your motor at all. A few moments later. 
So I've run that for about 30 seconds at three volts, nice and low, just to make sure I don't burn all the brushes away first time round. And let's have another look and see, have I made any difference to those brushes? Again, I'll put a close up on the screen now. To be honest, it looks like I've hardly made any difference to those brushes. So I can afford to up the voltage and therefore run them in a little bit faster. So here goes again. Much, much, much later. There we go. Let's have a close look at those. So you can see that's definitely a lot better than it was. Um, they've definitely run in. One has run in more than the other one. Um, but I think that's enough. So I'm going to see how well that performs on my motor analyzer and see if running it in backwards has helped the performance more in terms of percentage than it did running it forwards. You can see the water has now turned into a horrible colour. Um, remember, don't drink the water. Now that they've finished running in, and I'm happy that I think I've run the brushes in enough, I've given it a good drying with my X-Power Blaster. Basically, it's just a little mini uh, air compressor that blasts out the, the air. You can use these for all sorts of things. Um, I found mine on Amazon, absolutely great buy. Fantastic for drying a chassis if you're at a meeting and you've just washed your chassis and you need to dry it off. Fantastic for cleaning out your tire truer. These are awesome. Um, I've put a link in the video description for where you can get these. Uh, again, if you follow my link, I do earn a very small percentage from it, but it doesn't change the price for you. So please follow, please buy. Um, these are absolutely excellent. So I've given it a blast out with this to dry it all out. And then I've also used some electrical contact cleaner again just to clear out any carbon deposits etc that were in there from the water uh, again blasts it out blast it out with one of these when you're finished so the motors are now all dry and it's time to see how they're going to perform so i'm running the warm up now if you remember it was 19.3 before we're now up to 22.2 nearly 22.3 Let's run our acceleration test. Well, that's a big improvement. Before, the motor didn't even get up to 50,000 RPM. Uh, now it does, really quickly. And you can see, uh, when we compare the results from before, that actually maybe around about the 20 30000 rpm it's slightly slower than it was before but 40000 rpm is much faster and again it gets up to 50000 rpm so quite a bit of an improvement there on to the braking test So that's a huge improvement on the braking test. We've gone from 4,803 microseconds to decelerate per 10,000 RPM uh, to 4,625. And we've increased the e-brake performance from 34.9 up to 40.5. So basically I'm expecting a better braking performance from this motor now as well. So comparing our results side by side, we can see that when we ask ourselves a question, does running your motors in improve the performance of your motor? Well, clear answer is yes, it does. But the other question that we started this video with would be, does running them in backwards improve them more than running them in forwards? Well, if you've seen my previous video, you would have seen how much improvement happened when I ran it in forwards. So I'm gonna let you compare the results for yourself and make your own decisions it's fairly close. There's going to be a link at the end of this video for you to click on if you haven't seen my previous video. Thank you for watching another Cleave Tech Tech Tip. There's plenty more to come. I'm going to put in this motor into a 24th production car to use probably in a BSL and we'll see how it goes there. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.